YouTube is Brian Proctor back again with creating your own comic books from start to finish part four. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about uh, thumbnails and we went over the script a little bit. So we're going to get into more detailed thumbnails and maybe get into um, doing the detailed picture. I don't know because I want to start keeping my videos down to about 30 minutes because uh, I've noticed a lot of, well, I would say a lot of people, there was a few people who were saying they love the video, but it's kind of lengthy. And going back, I look at it and it is kind of lengthy. So I want to try to keep them down to about 30 minutes. So I'm going to cut down some of the talk. And, um, but it is the teaching that you need more because I can't give you the talent, but I can tell you how to use the talent to make it work out better. So, but before we get into this, we're going to talk about something that's real important. If you're going to do a comic book, the one thing you're going to need is paper. Now, this is um, um, a Strathmore, a Bristol board. This is comic book paper. You have to have 11 by 17 uh, paper to do it professionally. If you want to do it professionally. Now, this is, I think this was like $25. And this has uh, 24 sheets in it. And this is like a thick Bristol board. Uh, comic book paper and if you know about if you've done comics or if you even try to do comics you know about the you know this basically the comic book paper where it has the the blue lines and this you don't have to get the strap more you, you i think it's one is called blue line there's several different type comic book papers but they have all your guidelines that you can use to um do your panels and so forth and it has the lines that tell you to keep your action inside of all this but as i say this is about 25 dollars for 24 sheets and um, some come with the cover sheet so you can do your you draw your cover on it but do you need this no you do not because I ended up buying this right here for and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of this thing um, uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of this this was I think $28 for 250 sheets and it's basically the same thing it's, it's, a, it's a Bristol board it's just a tiny tiny bit thinner than the other thing and the difference between this and that and let me go over this again this is 250 sheets for $28 now I looked it up I have it on I'll, I'll put a link you can get it for $31 on Amazon yeah 250 sheets versus 24 sheets, $25, 250 sheets, $31. And it went up since I saved it on Amazon. And this is, it goes by the weight of the paper as in the thickness of the paper. And this is 110, is 110 pound. And this comic book paper says only 100 pound. So this is supposed to be thicker, but it just feels just maybe just like a millimeter thinner, shall we say, but let me show you this, why you don't need this. And the thing is, if you get this blank, this just does, it does not have the lines on it. But do you need the lines? No, you do not. Because all you have to do is draw in this line here. I think this is two inches. This is one inch by two inches. And let me show you. I've got some examples. I think this video is going to be all about comic book paper. And this is the cover for my next book that's good enough and it's on the white paper no borders i just know that you know well the cover you don't have to really too worry too much about it but uh here's another one this is from like book three or i think it was but the only thing i did on this was to make my two inch line here on the side so i won't go out and i think it, or the one inch, I believe, in two inches or two and a half inches, but I'll have that. I'll have that down in the in the in the thing to let you know exactly how much space you need in between. But it saves it saves um, it saves money, really. There's another page I did without that because you don't need on this paper. that gives you your guidelines for your uh, panels, but these are just basically square panels, and you won't really use it if unless you're doing just basic square panel you won't really need those guidelines this this one you know i have a long panel here a couple panels there a couple one a big one here and a small one there and this one's not even boxed in so you know you don't really need it but 
I did do it on this pa pa um, particular one because this was from book five that's coming out and I needed a filler paper and I think I had this the Strathmore right there so I grabbed a sheet and I pulled it out and uh, I still didn't use the guidelines right here you know you have your set for three uh, you you basically won't need it you won't need it there are no guidelines for small boxes it's just as long as you don't go past this the edge lines because that'll get chopped off in the book somehow when you put the book together and you fold it in it'll get chopped off as long as you don't go past that as long as you don't have your the action or your words way off to the side then it's fine you can do whatever you want to do with the pages so i would recommend buying this again 250 sheets and i bought this a long time ago as you can see by the um paper it's so torn up and i even had to tape it back together and i still have i don't know how, how many sheets left I and mean, that's that's a lot of paper and i've done a lot of comics and a lot of uh, uh, po uh, uh pinups and just other drawings so yeah that's that's just something to think about before you go and spend a lot of money on comic book paper i mean if you want to look professional if you want to go to the um, cons or whatever and you want to have your professional looking paper clean and white uh, you know that's fine but for those of you who are just starting and don't have a lot of money to be blowing 20 sheets 24 sheets for 25 dollars a dollar a sheet it, you can do that but for me i think the other way is smarter Okay, again, for those who are new to this paper thing, let me see if I can show you what you want. Let's see, you want one ten pound. If you can find something over one ten pounds, uh, get it. Two hundred fifty sheets, eleven by seventeen size, and it's best if you get a smooth finish. So, you definitely want a smooth finish. And anything a Bristol board type of paper, and this paper is pretty thick. And what I mean by Bristol board is this you have the regular copy paper and this is a bristol board which is a thicker paper and this is i think this is 110 or one i think this might be 120 hold on one second and i'll let you know oh this is 110 it's the same as the other paper and i don't even know what this is maybe like 70 60 something like that but there's a difference between when you hold the paper up this falls down and this basically just stays up so you want to get a bristol board 110 pound or better but as i say i will leave the link so that you won't have any troubles um with finding it all right and while we're talking about supplies let's do this these are some of the supplies that i use you don't necessarily have to use them but these are some of the ones that i use now in drawing i like to have three colors when i draw so I'll have a regular pencil. This is usually is an H2 pencil. You don't you don't have to have an H2, but please don't use a regular school pencil. I don't know what that is, a, a H pencil or B, whatever the school pencil. Don't use that because that's do too dark. This one is a, a blue leaded pencil, and this is the blue lead that is not is like a non photocopy blue lead. I'll draw that with that because I like the bite, shall we say? It's not too smooth. Like if you get an ink pen. Some ink pens just flow all over the, the paper and then it goes wet and some ink pens kind of grab the paper and it's, you have more control. So I'll use this and I will use, where is it? The red checking pencils. And the reason I do that is because like this, if I'm drawing a, a fight scene or something and I have like two or three characters, I can use uh, different colors to determine who's what and who's where. Or if I'm doing a lot of uh, clothes or something on this guy, or if I, want to redo his hand somehow I can use the red pencil to go over top of that and that way I'll know this is the one I want to use so usually I will use the three color pencils or three colors um, to draw with and then coming back to ink it I will tend to use one of three usually it's whatever's cheaper it's just the, the Faber Castell I think this is my favorite one because usually these are more cheaper. You can get the Statler, Statler uh, pens or the Micron. And to me, uh, my preface it is, is probably about this one here because 
the one thing and as i say i buy these depending on who has it on sale or you know um you know what's cheaper or where i am or what i need at the time and i would tend to get like this one has the different sizes you know you always want your brush you always want to want brush and you want a thin one for like faces and a thick one for like um your outline for your bodies and so forth so whenever you get that it's best to get a set and as i say i'll leave a link to all of this stuff in the description hopefully i will, will remember because you need that now the bad thing about the different pins are when you try to do something like this you want to have your solid blacks a lot of the pins won't leave solid blacks so i'm thinking the camera might be picking this up as a solid black but i don't know if you can see this up here but it's not solid black you'll scan this in and you can change it to black but some pins won't give you that that solid black um look where you have to do a lot of, of blacks let me show you another one i don't know if you can see that in the camera the camera might be picking it up as solid black but you have a lot of grays in in, in there and that's the one thing about some of the pins especially the cheaper pins you you want to stay away from the cheaper pins uh i would stick with those three names maybe um what is it prisma i think prisma has a pin set now prisma color but i've not used those but just the name alone prisma color is pretty expensive and then i also use for erasing usually a white eraser i don't i stay away from these red erasers which just throw these away throw these away and the gum erasers this is more for um detail drawing if you want to do like landscapes or something like that don't don't use this in comics because it gets so dirty so fast you're just dirtying your paper up so i stay with the white gum eraser and this is this is fred's i bought these this was a store was going out of business so i bought a bunch of these things but it doesn't necessarily have to be this but just go for the white erasers it's better and then lastly i will use a four color pen and the reason i use a four color pen is when i'm doing my dialogue i can have just different colors so i can say you know who's talking what page panel the whole nine yards and it's just easier to keep track of so um yeah these are the, the materials that i use so if you want to get started you know the, it's good to have those particular materials and it's also good for if you have your thumbnails you know this character could be speaking in in black this guy could be speaking in red so you can keep track of who's saying what and the narration could be in blue and you know, it's it's good to have just just because and this one this is this thing i got this you can buy one from Bic. you can buy this from any um not art supply store but office supply store and Bic has one i ordered that from from japan of uh, china and took forever to get and it's no different i thought it was just something different but it, it's not so all right let's try to get into a little bit of this thumbnail and i'm gonna try to keep my videos about 30 minutes so i'm already 13 minutes into it so i'm going to set my law for 30 minutes and uh stop there wherever i can okay so in the last video we went over the script we went over the the just these were just like really really quick thumbnails and i did that halfway detail for the the class that i taught in my college it was a local college and i, I think i i did say that in the last video and i used to teach like classes summer classes um, on how to do comics for kids and adults so we're going to do a better thumbnail and then probably do the detail in the next video let's let's go with the pencil on this one so let's say i have my 11 by 17 sheet and i always draw instead of using the whole piece of paper i always draw out my 11 by 17 sheet and, and i want to look at this and i want to find out what is the most important part in this on this whole page so to me it would be the two characters so i will start out with the two characters let's just say i will have it like that and then split it down the middle so these are going to be my two characters here and it's going to be the biggest panel and the other guy here 
And this is pretty much what I would do if I'm just thumbnailing because in my head I see that. So this one here, this is the, the opening establishing shot. This tells us that they are at um, the radio, the, the uh, not nuclear plant, but they're at a chemical plant. I'm standing up to see that you guys can see. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I can actually make this a little smaller because it's just an establishing shot. And let's just draw a little city thing just, just to recognize it. And this one, I can put like right here. This is a smaller shot, but this will probably be a down shot anyway. Just say, you see the some of the buildings. And this one, the danger radioactive material sign, because this is going to be, and as I look at it, I, I, I see pick up more details. So what this is gonna be, this is gonna be pretty much kind of an abandoned uh, chemical plant. So what I'm going to do here is, this is the panel that holds this. So this is my fence. And let me do this in, in, in a pen so that you guys can see that. And this gives you a little more detail. And this is the, the Statler, Statler pen. So what I'm going to do is the fence and the sign that is actually kind of falling off of the fence. It's, it's falling down. Danger. And then you have your barbed wire on top of the fence. And then uh, I'll have like a, this is, this is the pole here. And then maybe like a hole in the fence. So the fence will come down and the wires will be bent. And this will be like the hole in the fence. So you'll, uh, you'll know that this is how they got through because the place is just so torn up. It was abandoned. And there's your hole in the fence. And by the sign being down, you know that um, it's not well kept. Okay, keep, keep up, keep up, keep out. So these are my characters. So with that being smaller, and it's a good way for me to use this. With this being smaller, I can actually push this up. To here so my characters can actually go here to bring that up so this is conversation with these guys talking so I will keep that whatever space is left so I'll keep that here knowing conversation so I'll, I'll shift him over here conversation and then I'll shift him over here conversation so these guys are against each other so it's telling you by me shifting them over, it's telling them that, that I'm spacing them apart, far apart, like enemies. And I get a thicker, thicker brush, thicker, thicker pen. So let's just say it's going to be a three quarter shot. And this guy's going to be mad. And this guy is over here, another three quarter shot. And he's going to be kind of smiling because he's threatening to fight the guy. And he's like, yeah, whatever. So then you have your dialogue here. And you can cut some of the head off, but that's, that's not that important. And I, I do know what they're saying, but at this point, it's not much. I think he's saying, the, 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 what was that, five? Close up on boy, angry faith, face. I'm here it all ends tonight, so he's not saying much. So I don't need that much room for him, but I can put it in, in caps because he's, you know, he's, he's mad. So that would be the page one. Now I looked up some chemical plants online and I'm going to use some of the, the um, containers and buildings for the establishing, establishing shot. But it's not that important that you um, use every building and everything. You can always change it around just as long as um, people realize that. And the chemical plants did have like tanks, a lot of tanks and like pipes leading from the tanks to other to other tanks so that right away you'll know what it is and then on the sign it'll say um, whatever chemical plant danger keep out so that that um, that gives you no room for for thought it's like oh yes it's a chemical plant so in 
two, if I have space, I'll do another 11 by 17 sheet. And I don't do it all on papers because they get you get so many papers that things just go crazy. And if you saw my drawing table, you'd be like, how in the world do you actually work with all of that mess? But I do. So, okay, second page, second page. Let's see if I'm still in focus. I am I in focus? Yes. No, move this over. I have to keep getting up. My camera's above me and I can't move it so much. So I would say what would be more important here? And I would have to say the contact position here would be the most important to me. And since again, we've got six panels, I think I have six panels on all of them. Let's just say the explosion would be down here. I want to give the, the, the whole page for the explosion, the big, you know, K-A-B-O-O-M. And it might not be that big, but you'll see stuff. But I want to give that whole because that does have meaning. Um, let's go up here. This one is talking to the boy. This is going to be probably be a blacked out shot. So I can make this small. So, and this is the only hard part for me basically is just to do the panels to make it flow okay so let's this one this one okay so this can be let's just say this is going to be a full panel and I can have a small one here but I decided to change this when I was looking at this before I filmed it I was going to put the two guys like down here somewhere so you know that the the tank that got hit by lightning the guys were like right there next to it so that's going to have to be a down shot which is kind of important so it can't be that small and i'm tending to want to do like this another one like that so if i did the tank here and the guys kind of running up to each other to fight I could have the lightning hit the tank and then spread around the tank so that would work there so this would be the punch so we still have okay one two we still have four more panels to go lightning can be small I don't I can cut through or I can keep it in the panel let's just say this is the one that they're fighting one two three so one two three now see I'd have to keep this under that panel or maybe slice it through the clouds and lightning no I don't want that angle I don't want that angle because if I if I if I take this panel and cut through this line then you'll count that panel before you count this panel so this panel has to come before that panel so I will keep this under the line and have the clouds and the lightning coming down from the clouds because you can have a narration up here that says like at that moment and let's, let's see what be better the pen and one thing about if you get a pen and you try to, to write over, you got to make sure it's a good enough pen to write over your pencil to draw over your pencil and I'll, I'll do that in a second so and these are all you know subject to change this is the clouds and this is the lightning striking down from the cloud so we would have to make it to where it counts one two three four five instead of you saying one two three four but the lightning strike is so fast that it probably wouldn't really matter so okay we have what we have two left one two lightning that so and I can actually because of 
the amount of space. And this is really not 11 by 17, you know, shrunk down size, but you kind of gauge it. Uh, is that important? Which one would be more important? So this is going to be smaller. Because they're, they're just straight up. He's just petting the dog's head. And this is, this is going to be more of an open shot of the guys running. And here's the tank here. Toward each other. And as I said, I'm going to black this out. I'll probably pull back more so that you can see more tanks and stuff in the background. So it would end up being something like that. And I will bring this panel up more. So I can lift this one up to bring that up. No, I'll just, I'll just, this panel will be brought up more because this is the fight scene. This is the dog. This is him petting the dog. And we have enough room for the word balloons here. This is his dog. This probably be an overhead kind of scene looking down. Yeah, but then I won't get any more tanks in there. Uh, we'll have to work on that later. And you say this, all this is subject to change. And that might be too much of an overhead shot for this one. Something else over here, something else over there, just whatever, whatever would be on the ground. And it was a stormy, so there would be trash blowing constantly or leaves or whatever blowing. So that's your lightning strike, which I can bring that up. The clouds, these guys fighting. Oh, about to throw that punch. How did I have that? Throw the punch. This is the tank. Lightning strikes the tank. These guys are down here. This is from a different angle. They're going to be close because that was the second that they threw the punch at each other. And then the kaboom. So that pretty much establishes the second page. So you have your first page. This is the establishing shot. Um, first page, first panel. Second panel is the fence with the hole in it. Next panel is this. And notice how I do a quick body. That's the easiest way. And I've shown in um, a lot of my videos how to do a quick body for those who have trouble drawing. And then you have the boy, and then you have the antagonist. I guess that's the antagonist and the protagonist, antagonist. It's been so long since I got into that kind of stuff. And the words, and I can, I can, I can easily slide these guys over, or drop the words down, which is not really good. Try to keep the words up. As I say, I can slide these guys over. And that would be it for that page. Next page. Let me switch pages. Okay. Piece of paper. 11 by 17. Let me make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing because I'll draw for hours and you guys won't know where I am. Okay, I see this one right right at the at the at the beginning of it all. I said I wanted that to be a really narrow narrow shot clean this up a little bit so this is going to be narrow because there's no words no action and it's just him carrying the dog and I want it to be more like 
he's not coming to you, but he's walking away from you with the dog. And that's, that'll be kind of hard to do in black. Unless I leave some white out to show that his back is here and his arms are wherever. So, And the dog is hanging out and it's raining. So this one I can, I don't know, do I want it to connect here? This is, this is a, 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 like a major part of telling the story. So it needs to be a pretty big shot. And um, he'll probably moan. I don't know if I have 13. I don't know if I have him saying anything on panel 13. Boy wakes up, lying down next to unconscious. Are you okay? Okay, so he does say something. I have him like moan and then say, oh, are you okay, boy? And then the dog, you know, won't move. So he's carrying the dog home. So let's just let's say I have him here. He's here. I don't know, it kind of looks like he's running. And then the dog laid out here. Uh, next shot, next shot. These two, I could have, I still want to know that he's in bed, so. It would have to be a, a, a large shot as long as well as this one. Now, when I, when I run out of, um, and I've noticed I've, I've continued to do that. I'll just do a lot of straight, straight shots or just straight panels. And then, you know, have the boy in the bed and just put a little more detail, but I'm trying to get away from that right now. I don't know. I might do it. I might not, but for now, Basically, this is a remembering shot as well as this one. So I might keep those two the same. And the two people fighting down here. The tank and the lightning. So this one, I guess I did. So these are the two. So this one doesn't have to be that as big. I'm trying to make more room for detail. These would be the detail, especially this one. This is going to be the detail panel. This is his bed on the edge of the wall. Uh, maybe he has a picture or a window over here. But remember, you don't want to put too much detail into anything that's open because more than likely the, the word balloon is going to go there and then the dog word balloon will go there. But you still want, you just don't want white background on every page. Some you can get away with, like this one will be white. This, just because it's just, only this will be seen and drawn. The rest is going to be white. And then the, I don't know, maybe down here for the, for the dialogue. So, I think I'll do a closer, but that messes up for this is like dead space here. So I don't want to do that. So, and then the dialogue, if I leave the drop this box down, that will kill that dialogue space. So I'll still, I'll make this a little thinner and make this smaller. Because by making it thin and small, it kind of, he's all alone. It gives you that he's all alone feeling walking in the rain, but he is glowing and he doesn't know that yet. So as I said, I'll make this panel a little thinner and then I'll put this here so I can make these, this one bigger and I can put a little more detail like um, the part of the, the tank with the radioactive symbol, you know, hit him in the back and he's still laying there knocked out. And 
you don't have to have the feet. You just want the, basically, you don't have to have everything. You just basically want to let people know, you know, what happened in the shot. So there's no question of what went, what went, what went on. And as I said, these, I was going to make them black, but this is black. So I want to have the chemicals on him. So this is going to be more a detailed shot here. And then maybe the rain hitting the uh, the ground somehow. Yeah, and I have to draw this in detail. So the next one is, I think this one is more important than that one. So I will move this over. So I did this. So I will move this one over some because it's just him in the bed, him waking up. Just, just have enough detail in the back to know that he's in his bed. He woke up in his bed after that. So the pillow, the bed rail, bed rail, yeah, head, headboard rails cover and then this could be the dialogue so from here we have the him oh i got a headache what happened the cover is it the pillow and the the headboard and i might do a different headboard but it makes no difference really because the dialogue and this is why i'm saying you can use different color pens dialogue can be right there and then just like this one dialogue can be here so this is a bigger shot of him waking up in the bed i'm gonna have the bed well, i got the dogs right here so that establishes where the boy's gonna be draw a dog brian draw a dog Dogs are, depending on how tall your dog is, <coughs> where his head would be on the corner of your bed. <coughs> Too much talking drives me out. So he's here. He's sitting up, and the dialogue will go. And then, of course, <coughs> sorry, you have the headboard here. Covers coming down. The mattress. Where's his pillow? Don't forget the pillow. Pillow here, headboard. There. What's over here? More of the bed. Goes over here and then your wall. It's right on the corner of the wall. Usually your bed is. So in blue. I could either put it here or here. Or I could shift the whole picture over and then put the dial the, the um, word balloons here, depending on how much space I have when I actually finish drawing it. So let's just for now, let's just say we put it here, because I don't think he said much in that one. And then because this cover, the way I did this, there's a lot of room here. So let's put the dog here, and let's make sure you guys are seeing this. That my camera is still running. Because I'd be mad if it didn't. And then we will do the explosion. And how did I have that? I had the face. The eyes. I remember now. However, I had it in this one. And this it'll be a different tank when I finish with all of this stuff. And the lightning came down and hit it and kind of went all around it. And then the boom. Now the, he should this could actually go first, but that one is going to come before because he can always think, oh, I remember lightning hit it and then boom. But it's going to be kind of a reverse memory. And how do I have this? 
because I can actually bring this up more to give it more detail. So I have this like this, this here, a page. So I don't need this, anything, there's nothing down here. So I can actually chop this off and make to make this a bigger panel like so. And then I can have the explosion where the boy is flying. A little smaller and then the goop flies from the explosion. I don't know why I had that kind of drawing for an explosion, but I guess maybe the lightning could have turned it into some type of radiation, more radiated, radioactive explosion than anything else. And then actually to do this, let's just, let's just be comic booky about it. It shot the goo all over him. And see, there's a, just another reason to have a four color pen. And then, did I have the boom? He could scream, you know, ah, right there. And then the boom. So there, and I think I'm running out of time because I'm. it's kind of boring for you guys to see me do thumbnails. I can either take it to another video or I can keep going, but my timer hasn't gone off yet. And it's 41 minutes, so I think I will stop right here, and then we will continue the thumbnail thing next. Because as I say, I want to try to keep my videos down to 30 minutes, and I set a timer after I did all my talking. So let's just recap on this. How can you recap thumbnails? You want to go over what's most important in your shot. When you first see it in your head, for me, I see it in my head. I see the images in my head. And the only reason I did this in this much detail is because I was teaching a class and I handed this out to the students so they could do the, um, they could do their own uh, boards. And this was just an easy way. So the most detail on this one is, let me make sure you guys can see this. The two characters. This is the introduction of the two characters. So this is large, leaving room enough to, um, for their word balloons. Establishing shot, which biggest big long page because it's, it's a um, chemical plant. And then you have the sign, the fence, how they got in because it's tore up you, by the sign leaning down. And even the the barbed wire, I could have the barbed wire broken in a couple places to show it's old and dilapidated. Close ups of the face, leaving room for dialogue, no background. I could have something, well, probably like the, the paper or something blowing to show this a storm and his hair blowing as well and there goes my 30 minute alarm page two make sure you guys see this sorry for me jumping up and down but I want you guys to see it page two boy is talking to the dog that's not really important because he's not saying much and that could have actually been smaller that panel could actually be smaller and this one could be larger because there's more action going on here so i can actually take that and i did take it up some but i didn't want this to go read one two three four I wanted to read one, two, three, four. So I didn't take that up. If I took this up into this into that panel, you would have went to there and then down. So, but I can actually make this smaller. And let's do like this. But I'm gonna keep it this way though. I can actually make this bring this up, this panel up here and drop it down like so a little bit. But to do that, I would have to bring the characters up. So I'll just kind of keep it like that. This is the, to me, this would be the most important thing. They're fighting, and then they could be talking just before the fight scene, saying some juicy words to one another. Then the lightning strikes, 
and I don't know crack that's for the person who does the dialogue and then you have your overhead shot because these guys are mixing it up at this point then they, they really didn't fight the, as soon as they contacted before or a split second before they contacted the lightning would have hit the tank and then I would have the symbol on the tank because that's the same part of the symbol that hit the boy that landed on the boy and then the kaboom third panel would be this this is more uh, important than this one here so this is why I made this small this long enough to see or just big enough to see the boy glow and since he's not saying anything I don't think he's saying anything he might be saying something 14 no he's not saying anything it's just a lonely panel so I made it really narrow and blacked out and uh, make it look like he's walking away so I might have to draw some some ground here kind of make it look like he's going this way going that, and back into the distance so next shot this is a little smaller because he didn't say much you just know that he's in bed by his pillow and um, usually what he says and then this is a little bigger shot because the two two there's two and this is a little more important this is a remembering shot and there's another remembering shot this one has more detail because it's going to be bigger and this one has less because it's going to be a smaller one this is just 18 I don't think he even said that much in panel 18 and this is why it's good to pull out your script before that so you can keep track of how much dialogue is going to go into the box 18 close up on boy face I remember the lightning hitting the tank so that's all he says in that one so that could actually go I can drop this tank down and put his dialogue here so that's going to be it for this video I think I'm just going to keep going on the other ones and just when I come back for the for the next video they might be done I have to give some thought I don't want to I don't want to take away from the thought process because there's a lot that goes on in my mind when I do this that I can let you guys know so I guess the next one we'll just we'll go I'll go ahead and continue one two three three more pages so that if anything important comes out of my mouth you guys will be able to see it or hear it and understand it so the next one I won't start out with all the talking we'll just get right to it to, to keep it 30 minutes so on that I will check the links for the material if you don't already have it but it's a better deal to get that kind of paper and uh, yeah I'll leave links for all the materials and stuff that I showed you guys um, you should be you should have your characters at least designed by now I have been helping people with their characters if I have time email me if I have time I'm helping like three or four people and um, uh, Wayne and uh, Edgar I'm still working on your stuff so don't think that I gave up on you but it's just I'm doing a lot I'm doing two comic books uh, three children's books the YouTube channel and some other stuff and helping and teaching people and I'm teaching people online too so as I said I, I want to try to teach as many people as I can so if you have some questions or you want me to take a look at your your art I can take a look at it and show you a couple things to help you uh, make it better or point you into some different directions but just email me if you really serious about this I'll try to help you as best I can with all the stuff on my plate so with that said and um, don't forget the books that I have for people who um, are still working on anatomy my action books which I have published and you can go out and you can buy them I'm not really trying to push my stuff but I'm just doing this to help people that have trouble with anatomy it's easier to have your own book right there and handier so that you can do it and there's another woman's book too this is this is more of a men's men's uh, anatomy with a few women but it's one dedicated to all women which I don't have I think I gave it to somebody who asked who was having trouble and I ended up giving it to them so I'm out of those but you can order that these are on Amazon I'll leave a link to that too so as I say this video is still running uh, keep drawing I'll be back for the next video as soon as I can all right I'm out.